White Ribbon is the largest movement of men working together to end violence against women, to promote gender equity, healthy relationships, and to reinforce the new vision of what it means to be a man in today's society. The White Ribbon Campaign was begun in 1991 as a pledge to never commit, condone, or remain silent about violence against women. Since then, the campaign has spread to over 60 countries around the world. The goal of the White Ribbon Campaign is to work to examine the root causes of gender-based violence and to create a cultural shift that helps bring us to a future without violence. Each of you here are part of the solution to create this future, where we institutionalize the concept that violence against women is simply intolerable, and that it is never acceptable for anyone to use violence or intimidation as a means of controlling others. The message of the White Ribbon Campaign closely mirrors the Rep's Jesuit mission that calls upon us to be men for others, respecting the human dignity of each and every member of our community, regardless of our differences. Today we have the privilege to have two special guests. Chief of Police Gary McNamara began his career with the Fairfield Police Department in 1988. He has served as a department as detective, detective sergeant, lieutenant, captain, and deputy chief, and now chief of police. Chief McNamara has taught in the areas of critical incident response, interrogation techniques, auto theft, internet safety, school violence, and hostage negotiation. He holds a bachelor's degree in law enforcement and a master's degree in public administration. <coughs> Chief McNamara, welcome. One 
quarter of women worldwide will experience domestic or dating violence within their lifetime. We all know it's wrong. We all need to be aware it's happening. And we all need to be forces of change. The White Women Campaign is a movement to end violence and abuse against women. Abuse is not just used to hurt a female, but is to make the male feel more powerful or in control. As high school students, we need to be aware of this situation and understand that it is an unfortunate but common occurrence. Many of us will head to college campuses this fall. This is where we truly have to remember to be men for others and continue with the awareness of a white women campaign. If we encounter a situation of domestic violence, will we ignore it, put our heads down, and walk on? No. We will do the right thing at the right moment and help those who are hurt and stop the violence. By one person raising his hand and saying he is against domestic violence, we may, be, we may be able to influence others to join the White Women Campaign, raise awareness of the abuse against women, and follow the words of Father Pedro Rubin, and continue to be met for others. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, one of the reoccurring themes you'll hear today is part of your Jesuit education, Men for Others. But I would like to add to that, Men for and with lovers. It's one thing to be for a cause, a charity. Sure, I'll donate to that charity. But to get involved and do something for that charity yourself, or to get involved when you see wrongs being committed, makes you part of the Jesuit idea. Things occur at the university, both negative and positive. Let me dwell on some of the positive things first. You have the ability to take on leadership roles, and I've seen students come in as freshmen and develop through their four years and become leaders on campus. How do they do that? They get involved. They're for and with others. They take on service projects. They don't just donate to the charities but they go on service projects. I've also seen a lot of lives improved and people benefit through their college career that carries with them for the rest of their life. But on the negative side of that, I've also seen good people who have made bad decisions change their lives in an instant. And a re reoccurring thing we hear them say is, that's really not me. I didn't mean to. What can I do to make up for that? You have the ability to get involved. You are the future leaders, and you've heard that before. And just being here today, seeing this is so inspiring to me, and I know all the rest of us here, I believe we may be the first high school in Connecticut to do this as an entire school. Some of the ways we, we do things at the university, we have a group called Man to Man, you just heard that. And what that is, is a group of freshman males who start to explore their path in the university as being a man. And what it does, it provides a safe environment to explore contemporary issues that men face uh, going through manhood and shape their lives and development through their college careers. What can you do? You ask, okay, we've heard, get involved. But what do you do when you see a situation? There's three things that you can do. One, interrupt. Okay? And I, I say that in a tactful way. I'm not the most politically correct person. But you can do it in a tactful way where you're saving face and you're not creating an additional one. So step in and stop something from occurring. If you can't do that by yourself, enlist others to help you. Get others involved to help. And if all else fails, try to distract the person. If you see that they're going down the wrong path, try to distract them for a moment and take the person who is in danger out of that situation. Be a positive role model. Just being here today is a fine example. Thank you. Whatever it is you just heard, right? Because I'm not going to change it, it is what it is. 
not going to be able to move you. It kind of is what it is. So we'll just dismiss it. But I want to ask you a question. How many of you in this room, raise your hand, if you think you will ever hit a girlfriend or a woman? Raise your hand if you think you're ever going to do that. If, let me clarify the question before you raise your hand. How many of you ever think that you're going to hit a woman or a girl? Okay, good. That, that's a start. How many of you raise your hand if you think you're ever going to witness or possibly witness or encounter or hear a story about another man hitting a woman? And if you don't have your hand up, I would expect that it's either in a sling or you didn't hear the question. So how could that be? How could it be that I could ask a group full of men that they're never going to engage in violence or, or force over a woman, and yet we all acknowledge that we're probably going to hear about it, Ray Rice or some of the other athletes. How could that be? How is that the case? And I went to college, and I became a police officer. And I started to think about the term impact. And what I mean by impact is I wanted to have an impact. I wanted to be a person that if I walked in a room, I changed the dynamics of the room. And we all know it. We know people that come into a room and you don't even know they're there. I didn't want to be that person. I want to be a person that had impact. So if I were to ask you, it is what it is, the term it is what it is, how could we change that? How could we, right in this room right now, change that to make it really impactful? Anybody? I know nobody has a microphone, so no one's going to give me an answer. Let me just ask the empty bleacher behind you. Does anybody in the empty bleacher have a clue how I could change that it is what it is to something impactful? You know how? Just that one word. It is not what it is. And if you change and add that one word, it is not what it is, it becomes pretty clear to you. Relationships, turmoil in relationships, turmoil in life, in our own existence, it is not what it is. It just appears that way. So I'm asking all of you to join me, because I wanted to figure out how I could help. So I joined the White Bear Campaign. Tom Gallagher uh, formed it in this area I joined it. But the white ribbon really wasn't enough, so we started to walk a mile on her shoes a bit. How many of you came to that last year? Walk a mile on her shoes. Some of you definitely came to that. It's only a mile you can all do it. You can do it uh, walking in her shoes, and you can just do it walking alongside all of us. But it's really designed just to have an impact. Just to say that I personally can change and have impact what's within arm's reach. You know, the internet and the news really paints a global picture for all of us. And if you start thinking of all the problems in the world, we're really going to have an impact with nothing. So what I choose to do is have the impact with what's within arm's reach. And if you can change what's within the reach of your arms, then you certainly can have an impact. So I want to thank you all for, for listening to me, listening to you all in the back. And I hope to look forward to seeing you at the Walk on Mile of the on April 29th. Thank you so much. I just want to spend a couple of moments to speak about the White Ribbon Campaign specifically. As you heard earlier, domestic and sexual violence is not just a women's issue. We believe that men and boys have a critical role in our community help us end violence against women and girls. The White Ribbon Campaign is the largest effort in the world of men working to end violence against women. A little background on the White Ribbon Campaign. In 1991, a handful of men in Canada decided they had a responsibility to urge men to speak out about violence against women after the Montreal Massacre of December 6, 1989. On that day, 14 female students at the Ecolo Polytechnic were killed and 13 other students wounded by a man motivated 
by his hatred for women and feminists. The Center for Family Justice created our White Women Campaign in 2008 as a way to partner with men and boys in our community. The White Women Campaign's vision is a community without male perpetrated violence against women and girls. The White Women Campaign's mission is to engage men and boys to end violence against women and girls. The main goal of the White Women Campaign is ending violence against women and girls in all its forms. We accomplish this in the following ways. Challenging everyone to speak out and think about their own beliefs, language, and actions that contribute to domestic and sexual violence. Raising public awareness of the issue. Safety. It's a luxury many of us take for granted. We all feel safe in our homes, and we all feel safe here at Fairfield Prep. The right to feel safe is something each and every one of us should enjoy. Unfortunately, this is one right which many women are denied, even in their own homes. Violence against women is a universal dilemma. White women is a chance for us to say no to violence against women and show the world that will not be tolerated, is not fair, it is not right, and it is simply not permissible. My name is Sean Lynch, and I was asked to speak today about why I support the White Women Campaign. As a junior here at Fairfield Prep, there are certain values, such as man for others and madness, that have been deeply ingrained in me since the past three years. As a man for others, I want to have a positive impact on my community and take action for what I believe in. I feel we all have an obligation to play a significant role in creating a caring and safe community that embraces all individuals' personal well-being. The Jesuit Madness refers to going the extra mile and making some sort of change happen. Change happens within us and it needs to begin now. This campaign is directed towards courageous men. The type of men who stand tall, are reluctant to remain silent, respect women, and most importantly, never see violence towards women as an acceptable excuse for any given situation. When we all take the pledge, the message goes out that women, men, and children who are caught up in the horrors of violence know that the white women message is not just something you read about, it's not just an event you attend, but rather it is a personal and communal commitment to say that violence is wrong, and all of us must take some sort of responsibility to ensure that we have a safe and supportive community. So when you take the oath today, remember it's not a hollow statement. These words mean you are part of something bigger, part of a group of men who are taking a stand to break the cycle of domestic violence, being part of something which can save lives. So if everybody could stand, we're going to all read the... Uh, All right, just repeat after me. I pledge, I pledge to never commit, to never commit condone, condone, or remain silent, remain silent about violence against women and girls. About violence against women and girls. Uh, good morning. Seeing, witnessing, or hearing inappropriate speech or actions gives each of us 
the opportunity to step forward and not step back. Having the integrity to say to someone that they are wrong or to say to someone that those words are inappropriate takes great courage. We as athletes can have an enormous impact towards minimizing violence and improving standards in our society. Currently in the lacrosse program, we are having many discussions about the differences between being friends and being teammates. Great teammates have the ability to respect, challenge, and hold accountable the others around them. As teammates here at Fairfield Prep, you truly need to be men for others. You need to have the character and courage to step forward to stop destructive speech and behavior. You need to have the integrity to hold your teammates accountable, accountable in any situation that you may encounter. You need to have the honesty to say the right thing in an uncomfortable situation. I'd like all the prep students to please stand up. In this moment, we're all standing together. I am challenging all of you. I challenge all of you to truly be men for others. We are here to serve others on our teams, in our classes, and in our community. A true man for others will stop the struggle behavior, will be respectful of all relationships, and will be a person that steps forward in service of his fellow man. Please be seated. Pleasure to stop and ask us. See you here at the same time. Great legacy will live on through each of our actions. 